make you weep no more I said cause you will wet the bed always I know I won't get to watch my show they will keep you waiting it's very frustrating hi there my name's James and thank you so much for checking out my podcast dad mind matters helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds in today's podcast i'm going to tell you the six things you can do when you are trying to negotiate with a toddler or maybe a three-nager so a child that's three who just won't say anything but no I've just finished writing a book that I hope is going to help first time dads to support their partners and themselves through pregnancy. If you'd like a completely free digital copy of this book, just click the link in the description of this episode so I can send it to you. All I would ask for in exchange would be your honest review of the book, even if you only manage to read a few pages when it's available on Amazon in a few weeks time. If you're a parent who has been through this stage, then you will know firsthand how frustrating it can be when your child will say nothing but no to everything you suggest. If you haven't gone through this stage yet, then I would suggest the next 12 minutes might be a good investment in your parenting. I'm a happily married father of three. We have three children aged 10, 8 and 4. So this is something I have a little bit of experience on. Every single one of my children has tested me to varying degrees i'm absolutely blessed to have them they're three awesome little people but they have all gone through that stage of just saying no to everything all the time for no reason i've done quite a bit of research on this and apparently the reason that at two or three no or challenging everything that you suggest seems to be quite a common occurrence is because their level of brain development is at its highest at the moment they're basically trying to test you to see what they can get get away with i imagine they do this for for a number of reasons maybe just just sort of out of the interest of what will happen if i do x what will happen if i challenge mum or daddy on this even if it's something actually that i want i think also maybe it's in a way of testing their boundaries testing a way to see how safe they are one of the biggest frustrations i found is when i would make the mistake of asking my child what they wanted for supper and i'd give them a long list of suggestions five ten suggestions would work out what various ingredients they wanted I'd cook them and then put them on a plate and they'd be like, I don't, uh, I don't want it. They're not hungry. You've just wasted two or three hours and money and you want to cry. So with that in mind, tip number one, when you're dealing with a child that won't say anything but no, is put them in charge. This may sound ridiculous and pretty dangerous. It's not. When I say put them in charge, give them the impression that they are in charge, but actually you're in charge. So for example, instead of saying, what do you want for supper? Give them two choices of things that A, you can cook, B, you have, and C, is going to be quite easy. So, for example, I might say to the kids, do you want pasta with cheese or pasta with pesto? Or do you want fish fingers? Or do you want fish fingers, chips and beans? Or fish fingers in a wrap? Or fish fingers with cucumber sliced up and in a wrap? Would you like jacket potato with beans, cheese and butter, cheese, beans and butter? Basically, you're just giving them and what sounds like lots and lots of choices based around three ingredients. This will make them feel in control, which ultimately is what they want, is what they're trying to get in the first place. Tip number two, don't engage too early. When they come in and say, I want a biscuit or I want to do this, don't rush to answer. Take your time. You're the adults in the room and therefore you will talk to them when you've got time to talk to them. Even if their request pushes your buttons and makes you furious and you want to instant react, count to 10. Don't even look at them and engage calmly and slowly. They're testing you. They're wanting to see what you can do. They're trying to see if they can wind you up. There's probably nothing more frustrating to a toddler than a parent who's remaining calm and is in control of the situation. It is really difficult to stay calm, especially when it's at the end of a long day when you've probably been stuck inside because it's been raining outside. You maybe had no sleep from the night before. You may be tired. You may be stressed and worried about things that are going on in your life. This is just one more thing that you just feel is going to push you over the edge. It's really, really difficult. If you can try and see the funny size of how ridiculous it all is sometimes, that can help. Tip number three. Sometimes say yes, depending on what it is, obviously. If it's something that might be potentially dangerous, then daddy, can I 
play with a knife block? Well, obviously, that's a definite no. But, Daddy, can I have another digestive biscuit? Yes, why not? But maybe let them know that that's their last one and they're very lucky to be having one. And please, you need to say thank you, Daddy. Tip number four, get them to help you. If you're trying to leave the house, why not say, right, let's see who can put our shoes on the quickest. And the person who does will get a biscuit when we come back from the park. Or if you're cooking supper, right, why don't you help me? Get them involved in making their own supper. If they feel part, it's all part of a game and it's something you're doing together, they might be more engaged and more likely to eat it at the end. Tip number five, distraction. I don't, I've seen this written in a really nice, in a really good article that I'll put the link to uh, below this. I don't know how effective it is because toddlers are intelligent and you can fool them once, but you might not be able to continue to fool them with the same thing. They will probably learn that you distracting them with however is, is basically, they know what you're doing. So you could try to distract them. I just don't know how effective that is. And tip number six, try some strategic ignoring. If your child is ignoring you or refusing to do what you're asking them to do, then ignore them for a bit. And if you have other children who are doing what you ask them to do, then make sure that you heap praise on them for doing so. It's not that you're ignoring the bad behavior, it's just that you're not highlighting it. You're basically not giving them a reaction. I imagine the only thing worse than getting negative communication or being told off is getting no communication. I often find that if I heap praise on whichever of the two whichever children are putting their shoes on or not picking their nose or not hitting the car window with a plastic batman not hitting their sister over the head with a swim float not singing daddy is a poo bum repeatedly for the last 10 minutes not getting upset and asking why is it their sister's birthday not their birthday not getting cross because their brother's socks are brighter than their socks not getting upset because you won't agree to take them to disneyland for christmas i think three of the things that children need you to be more than anything are fair consistent and kind sometimes you just have to breathe keep calm and get through the situation i've been on so many car journeys where they're arguing about something amongst themselves or they're cross with you for something or they're playing with the car windows don't think about anything other than getting through the next few moments and then getting through those moments and getting through the next few moments and before you know it the moment's passed if you know how to do this, then please let me know because I often get it wrong. But if you can not lose your temper and not shout, then that works. To an extent, I think if you do lose your temper and shout, then they've kind of got the upper hand. But parenting is so hard and it will challenge you in ways that you don't even realize. It's important to show yourself compassion in those times when you're just absolutely at your wits end and you can't do right for doing wrong. Just be kind for yourself. The fact that you have taken the time to research ways to, imp to hopefully find ways to be a improve your parenting means that you do care and that you are totally doing enough. People that generally don't care and generally aren't doing enough don't know that. Things always look worse in your head than they actually are. When your child kicks off in the morning in a busy public area, usually on the way to school, and they're shouting and screaming, and you think that everyone else is looking, you thinking, God, what a terrible parent. They're really not. If you're anything like me, and I, when I see that, I just feel sorry for the parent. You never know where they are. You never know what their day's been like. I always feel sorry for people. I would never look down on someone who's having a tough time, because children can be unbelievably <laughs> unfair. Some of the random acts of kindness that I've appreciated the most are when I've been out in public with one of our children when they're being an absolute nightmare. You're in a shop and someone lets you go in front of them. A parent holds a door open for you or gives you a knowing smile or even says something that makes light of it. These moments actually when your child is being a nightmare and you're really embarrassed about it in public, they've actually brought out moments where people you, you've seen evidence that kindness is everywhere and people on the whole are good and on the whole want to help other people so as embarrassing it is if you're a parent and, it, and your child kicks off just know that any other parents who are witnessing that are feeling sorry for you and are with you on this one no 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 it's a milk embargo yes that includes milk 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 I'm trying to build a community with this podcast to help parents, specifically dads and specifically dads who struggle with their mental health. If you like what I'm trying to do and you got something from this, please give me a comment or a review or maybe even share it with a friend. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. 
You spend your day off taking rubbish to the tip Your wife comes home and says you missed a bit But don't worry Cos you're the daddy Dad Mind Matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday. If you'd like to receive my monthly newsletter, email me at mydadmissions at gmail.com. Alternatively, you can leave your email address in the comments section or check out this podcast episode description.